Welcome to another episode of the Developing Dads podcast. We're on number 21. This is mad. Like, we started this oh. back. We started this back in, yeah, January. And here we are, you know, approaching May. And we've managed to, to get to 21 episodes. Like, again, I think there's got to be a point where we stop, like, being surprised about how many episodes we've done, Neil. <laughs> I know. I know. And it's it's actually just a thing that we fundamentally do now, which is a podcast every Monday. But, no... I'm happy to be here as per usual. How uh, how's your week been so far, Neil? It's it's been pretty mad. It's probably my, my busiest week in in Shark Tower life in my in my career, my my job day to day job. Um, we're taking on a, a new customer just now, and yeah, one one of the biggest customers we've we've had, and it's just a massive massive amount of meetings, back to back meetings. But it's good. It, it's it's nice. It's nice to be busy again. It's nice to just. Not sure where the day's gone, but it's gone well. Do you? Yeah, um, I'm, I'm having a beer because it's Friday. Do, well, my do, Friday. Do you feel like? Because before we start, we try not to talk too much before we start because it kind of like perhaps ruins the fun surprise that we get when we're having a conversation between the two of us uh, over the podcast. But yeah, Neil sat, Neil sat down and he just let out the biggest sigh I've ever heard. Just like <laughs> you know, just like he's. He's done. He's done for the week. And that's it. He's doing his podcast, having his beer. The kids are asleep. The sun is still clearly shining. If you're listening to this or watching this on YouTube, it's still it's still up. But it's what, was it just an onboarding process with this new client? Or was it just the demands of it? Or what was going on? Yeah, so we were getting them, getting them inducted in the system and f- figuring out their ways of working. And they manage, I can't really name drop yet, but they, they manage, it's a public sector customer. Um, and they manage like massive housing developments of like 5,000 homes and the programs that they're managing are massive project programs. And it's just super interesting. So my background is like transformation, IT projects and that kind of thing. And then when you sit down with somebody that's managing a, I don't know, a new, almost a new little town getting built, it's just nuts. And like regeneration of old areas in London and stuff like that. It's really, really cool. Nice. So yeah, just lots of information in taking and anyway. it just scales up though doesn't it neil when you think about it, it it's it's like running a restaurant that's got 20 seats in it to now running a restaurant that has 2000 seats in it the, yeah i suppose those principles still apply but it's just the magnitude of those principles like the it's the same as moving into this sort of youtube realm aspect of things where you know i'd be delighted on my youtube channel if i made 300 quid <laughs> yeah. but it's, it's a bit different to making five hundred thousand quid which yeah, yeah, definitely. Is, it's just the, the way it is, I guess. But anything else? Any other highlights of the week, Neil? Anything more um, personal rather than professional? Yeah, I guess on a personal note, I haven't discussed in the podcast, but a bit of a story time for you. So I I followed this guy on Instagram for a few years now, and he's really into his whiskeys. A chap called Graham Skinner. Um, n- not a big following at all. I don't really know how I found him, but anyway, posts some good content and lives just maybe a couple of hours from me. I messaged him saying, I want to get into whiskey, but where do I start? Like, what whiskey is a good whiskey? What blend is a good one to try? And he was like, I'll send you six kind of tasters and you can have a, have a shot of six different ones. So I was like, right, I'll give you some money for it. Give me your PayPal and you're refused. Anyway, a care package came a couple of, about a week ago now with six different whiskeys and handwritten tasting notes. And it's just mad. Like, people give a lot of stick to, I don't know, online use and talking to strangers and all that stuff. But there is nice people out there. And it's unreal, Neil. Like that, yeah. I saw you post that on your Instagram <laughs> stories, and I was like, "What? Hold on a minute." A, my brother's <laughs> getting into whiskey, and B, you know, the kindness of strangers, which is just, yeah. it's mind blowing sometimes. He, he's given me one that's. He said it's extremely rare. I mean, he's a whiskey collector, and um, and he said it would be great to share this with you because it's your kind of your first first whiskey whiskey journey. It's from nineteen. When I say nineteen eighty, I've got the details. Nice. But yeah, just mad. So yeah, that was a that was a kind of personal highlight from my point of view. Anyway, how, how's your week been? I was, I was sorry, I was just about to say that. Does this mean now every Christmas I just get to buy a bottle of whiskey? Well, yeah, I think so. I mean, I've, I've enjoyed three so far, and they gave me double nips, so it's like I can go back and try it again. Like, anyway, yeah, I'm, I'm getting into my whiskeys. There he is. He's back. I don't know how far oh. how far we got into that that whiskey chat, but I'm I'm not editing this, Neil. I don't care. <laughs> I don't no, care. I, I answered your question. You came back at the right time. Um, oh, anyway, smashing. How's, how's your week been? How's how's my week been? I'm trying to think. 
it's been a bit more chill. I think we talked about that in the last podcast where... Ali's on holiday. Ali's, Ali's on holiday. So <laughs> a little bit more chill, but just I think there's a balance of me preparing myself for this daily vlog task that's about to descend on us to just kind of taking like a little bit back from all the hours that I was doing over sort of the previous few weeks. So I guess I'd just taken it a little bit easier. So I'd start maybe a bit later, finish on time, that kind of stuff. So when I say easier, it was, I'm still doing work, just in case there's anyone at works listening to this. <laughs> but it's been more administrative, uh, polishing off a couple of edit things that I needed to finish that, you know, I need six or seven hours but just of clear air to sit down and do, which I don't normally get. Um, talking to a few team members that I haven't talked to for a while, just, you know, chatting to them about things like kind of just connecting, I guess, on some of the projects and things we've got ahead where we are sort of rebranding-ish the podcast, looking at different ways to film it, looking at different ways to record it, having a different editor slash even the the editor being the videographer to, to carry out all those duties because it's quite a big lift to get it all ready. And just some, like, I've had some really, really nice feedback not just from my line manager, Angus, but also from the team, you know, being mentioned in, we have a quarterly sort of survey that gets put out around the team just to talk about how you're getting on in the company and how the company's doing itself. And then if there's any team members you want to give shout outs to. And it was just really nice that people mentioned me quite a lot, which... Nice, nice. Which, you know, there was the one, it was the one big thing that I was, I guess, I was quite nervous about going from someone who was self-employed for 12 years to then, you know, interacting like a normal human being with other normal human beings <laughs> and getting along. Yeah. But, you know, hopefully I've done all right and I haven't offended anyone too much. No, it's good. It's good. And it's, it's always a worry when you meet new colleagues and I don't know, you've got to prove yourself to not just one person, but to, to a few other people to... I guess so. There's, there's, something, there's something a little bit... Uh, I guess there's terms like permissionless po- uh, entrepreneur to you know, say sorry for things that don't necessarily hurt people or get you in jail. You know, I guess there's part of that in me. There's soft skills that I could be better at. You know, the, I can be a bit brash sometimes and a bit loud. But at the same time, like, there's nothing really that offensive about maybe I'm just a bit more excited about stuff than normal where, you know, but apart from that, like, it's it's been good. It's been good getting to know people and... And what else? What else have we done this week? Oh, how stuff is properly ramping up, Neil. Like it, it's turned to it, the dials turned to nine at least. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Which is, but it's good. It's good because there's there's like almost a roof on it, so it wow. looks it looks like a structure now. Although I had to tell the builder Aston, who's been very patient with us, that we wanted bigger bigger Velux windows, so now he's had to move all of it. So he, wow. he was he was delighted with that. He now has to also cut the some of the brick that he's got built for a wall because we want wider bifolds, you know. And now we've got to plan out this weekend where we've got to basically work out where we want light switches and lights and plumbing and all that kind of stuff. So before we can start putting up sort of the plasterboard, we should have the delivery date sorted for the kitchen. So that will be ready. And now we're just sort of deciding basically on the flooring, and then having that installed. So, yeah, pretty, pretty... pretty. Epic. It's epic. It's bloody expensive. I have no money, none whatsoever. (laughs) And, yeah, good week, really. It'll be worth it. It will be. It will be. I hope so, Neil. I hope I I don't sit there and just go, Jesus, this this kitchen cost how much? (laughs) (laughs) What's going on? Yeah, yeah. Anyway, we're um, we're getting to episode 21's topic so i think I, I thought this idea way way back when we started when we were kind of brainstorming ideas and i thought it'd be quite a good one to do question anonymous questions which basically means that gordon's not aware of any questions or any of the questions i've got written down here some are quite deep some are a bit a bit funny and others are about, about dad stuff so um let's see how far we get there's maybe about 10 questions but we might not get through all of them part part of this should, there's a bit of uh, i hope there's no holds barred kind of thing what does that because, mean well i mean i'm i'm i get to do this to you at some stage down the line <laughs> on our podcast journey where i interview you and ask you various questions so part of me hopes you a haven't held back you know because it could be a juicy one right where we can take this out <laughs> put this in the episode and then we get millions of views 
<laughs> yeah, there's there's some. I don't know. I mean, we could do multiple ones of these. We could, we could, if, if they're not juicy enough, we could, we could juice it up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Neil. Well, I'm game. So, whatever, whatever you want to ask. Right. Okay. I'm just I'm, I'm processing just now. Oh, excellent. I'm I'm glad you're really prepared for the podcast. We've had two amateur instances currently in this podcast. One is the internet cutting out and going a bit silent. And then uh, Neil's Neil's trial. Yeah, I'll, I'll, start, I'll start with the dad life ones first. There's, there's four dad life ones. Oh. So what, what are some of the things you're going to try and do to give Olivia the best life possible? The best life possible. One one of the main ones is earn enough money to send her to private school. Now, I get it. There's plenty of kids that have probably gone to private school and got not gone any further with it and probably just become drug addicts and, you know, not become very nice people. Equally, a lot of people have gone to public school and got great degrees and gone on to do great things. But... There's something about that foundation. There's something about more attention at school. Like the classes are smaller. The individual tutoring is better. The experiences, the connections, the contacts, the drive to go to university. And sure, university costs a lot of money and it gets into debt and all that kind of stuff. But statistically, people who go to university earn more than people who don't go to university. It also gives them an opportunity to learn business, to learn something that gives them an underpinning to be able to make choices in in the world i guess other things the the one other thing i could probably think of off the top of my head is she she knows that i've got her back so whenever she's in trouble if there's ever a decision she felt like she's she's made badly i'll get her out of that hole i'll be there i'll pick her up i'll go and get her no matter what time of night it is no matter where she is I want her to know that fundamentally I'm there to support her and I'm her number one fan and a number one supporter and no matter what she does I won't judge her for it but I want her, I'd rather she told me so that I can I can help fix it or I can help applaud it or whatever yeah you know that, that, that both good answers I guess the the private school one's interesting because I know a few people that have been to private school and as you say the, there's the, the probably the the statistics are higher. It's higher of success rate if you go to private school. But the people I know that went to private school haven't done that well. They've kind of, yeah. Yeah, just, and I'm 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 okay with that. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's got to be this. I've got to have my my ducks in a row, if you will, before that potentially happens. Because private school can be upwards of like thirty thousand pounds a year, forty thousand pounds a year. We've got two kids. You've got to both send them to private school. You can't just send it to one. So that's upwards of like £80,000 a year on private education. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I've got to be doing some before that happens. Yeah, I'll, and I'll be honest. There's definitely going to be a... Yeah, you've got to do it. Think about it carefully. And another, another one, I doubt they listen to this podcast, I'll say it anyway. Um, there's friends of ours, not so friends anymore, that have put their kids to private school, two kids, and they're really struggling so financially they, they, they don't have that great of jobs in fact the the mum has got a, a job in a, in a bar at night and it's, it's kind of that extent they were so desperate to go to go the private school route and now they're in a bit of financial difficulty because so I, I don't know what the process is if you do a few years in private and then try and get back into public yeah it's you know i i get it but i i, I have to i have to be in a good position or we have to be, as as me and Laura, have to be in a good position to be able to do it. Yeah. And and I'm working towards that, and I'm hoping I can achieve that. But if it's not there, I'm not willing. I, I I'm not willing to work in a bar at late at night to be able to afford to send my kids to private school. Yeah, yeah. Your your quality of life just goes down. Cool. No, that's good. Um, what advice would you give Olivia when she no? So, what advice would you give to a sixteen year old Olivia? <laughs> 16 year old Olivia a 16 year old Olivia what would I give advice for that she'll be I don't know, almost 6th year year 6 
I don't know, actually. Like, what would I say to a 16-year-old these days? <laughs> like, I, I think there's part, part of it is like, don't worry too much about the decisions you make now. Yeah. But part of me also wants you to know the significance of some decisions. So there's like a, there's a safety aspect, you know, looking after yourself, making decisions around that. If alcohol starts to come into things, if cigarettes start to come into things, these, these can all contribute from a physical health perspective, not just now, but potentially down the line. Again, non-judgmental, if, you know, if she wants to have a, if she get pissed with her friends and a, at 16, then it's not something I'd like, but it's equally, it's her choice. I don't think I'd force her either way. But just understanding there are there are choices that you're making there that can impact things like safety and uh, potential health choices, that kind of thing down the line. But then also, you know, taking risks and going out in the world and, you know, yeah. Go, yeah. go and do that, do that charity work or that talk that you, you're worried about. Go and, like, study for your exams, like, make an effort on those exams because... Sure, they don't. The Pythagoras theorem is something I've never used since <laughs> since I was seventeen. But it's a, an education is a good foundation to your future. It it is it fundamentally is, and yeah, that that's what I would say. I'd say like study for your exams. Have like you have you be be brave and go out there and do things and ask questions and don't. Don't be afraid to challenge what's in front of you. But at the same time, be aware that there are choices that you will make or you'll want to make that you should give a th second thought to if they impact your, your ultimately your safety and your health. That's what I would say, I guess. I think. Yeah, no, I think that's pretty, pretty solid advice for a question that you just, you've heard for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> what can I say, Neil? I'm pretty good at an interview. Hey. That's good. That's good. Um, what, what are, right now, so currently... I mean, Olivia's what, eight, ten eight months, months old? Eight, eight months, months old, now. So what's your biggest worry slash concern as a dad currently? So don't think about the future. Don't think when she's turning five oh or 16 or 18. What's what's the biggest worry for the future? Uh, you know, when you were asking me about that, about the safety aspect of things, I was like, oh, please don't get pregnant at 16. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, that's, that's a fear. That's life-changing. Yeah, because it's... But again, you know, when if Olivia, Olivia, uh, Olivia w w listens to this or even watches it on YouTube, again, th there's no judgment. I just, you know, I, I, I've just had a kid, which is you, Olivia, if you're listening to this. Neil, you've had kids. <laughs> and they do it. They impact your life quite considerably. You know, you lose a sense of yourself, like I've talked about in previous podcasts. They, they take a, a large financial uh, investment overall. They take a huge time investment, not just from yourself, but also from your from your respective partner. So yeah, that, that's a bit of a fear, I guess. But it's irrational. Like that's, I'm again, I'm stealing worry from the future potentially. I worry that you know she doesn't feel happy for for whatever reason. I fear that you know she, she gets caught up in anxiety and rejection and uh, all these kind of like very difficult things that you have to deal with when you're like a teenager and stuff like that. But even they can go into adulthood. I hope she doesn't suffer with that because that's. That can really hinder you from your progress in terms of life and the way that you can, yeah. you know, interact with people and jobs that you go for and, you know, education that you'll maybe take or hobbies that you want to undertake and all these kind of opportunities. So I just, I really hope she's happy and doesn't suffer with an anxiety or depression or mental health issues. Um, I guess that kind of, I don't know, makes me think about that in terms of my kids and what social media, and we've kind of talked about this on and off in different episodes, but what social media has to play in terms of mental health and body image and, and all that stuff. And yeah, that, that scares me. I know it's not my question, but I was getting to that age where which is, oh, I don't know. I guess, it, half. I guess it does. I guess it does scare me, but at the same time, I don't, I, I don't know how I would potentially deal with it. So then I'm trying not to fear something that I can't control or I can't kind of offer an opinion on perhaps where I think everyone, even before social media, this type of thing occurred. Because, like, Laura went to school, for example, and she went to school with lots of friends and things, and they all had the, the 
quite stereotypical aspect of of girls growing up. You know, it's all about what it looks like and being skinny and doing all these kind of things and diets play into it and exercise and just hormones and being a teenager and all that kind of stuff plays a role within it. And this was well before Instagram. You know, probably had a bit of Facebook, but definitely didn't have Instagram. So I, I, I guess I hope it doesn't, it's not as extreme. It's maybe not as extreme as it is now because the access is so much more in magazines seem such dis are so distant in the sense that they were just kind of you know paintings on a pi or just a picture in a magazine and they weren't moving whereas now you can literally you know see ten people's lives so much more than perhaps you used yeah. to be able to we, we seem to be having a bit of cutouts every so often but we'll come back to it and hopefully you heard a little bit of what i just said neil i can see you smiling and nodding yeah yeah got it got it Next one, I should really kind of get these. <laughs> yeah, I'm the best this, host. But this is but this is kind of the this is the fun part about the podcast, isn't it, Neil? Because you would have I'm never roll, done rolling this. with it. Yeah, but you would you'd have never done this. You know, this is a skill that you're learning. Is yeah. you know, the the idea of like preparation for podcasts, how you interview people, how you interject to a certain extent when you're having a conversation about something, how you offer your opinion. Like I think it's just I think it's awesome. Everyone should podcast. Everyone should learn how to talk in public. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. Um, so this one may have a a different answer depending on who you ask in your family, anyway. But do you think you have a good work life balance, and how does that impact Olivia? No, I definitely don't, and I don't think I ever have. I did for a little while. Yeah. I, I did guess. A, yeah, sorry. Think of the impact. Like, what's that, what's that doing to Olivia and your relationship? I do worry about it. I'm not going to lie. You know, because, you know, they, but there's something, there's something, I'm trying not to be irrational about it, where Olivia definitely prefers Laura's attention. Like, there's no, there's no denying that. And there's kind of like a rational part of me says, that's kind of obvious, it's kind of normal, because Laura spends, you know, seven days a week, 24 hours a day pretty much with her. She fed her, she gave birth to her, like all these types of things that, that, con that fundamentally contribute to all of that. But then at the same time, I think slightly irrationally, I'm like, I'm not around as much as I, I could be. I'm quite obsessed with work and working and the kind of progression of it. So that contributes towards her not necessarily wanting me all of the time. You know, if she wants comforted, it's usually by Laura rather than necessarily by me, like all these kind of things. So I guess I don't, I don't have a good work life balance, but there's part of me feels kind of sad about it. Like I've just talked about, but some of it doesn't, I don't feel sad about it because I love working. I love it. Like nearly every single yeah. job that I've had, Apart from probably a couple of like instances where I've not really enjoyed the place I worked, you know, like during when I was working in hospitality, there's a place that I worked that, you know, the guy that owned it and the, the kind of atmosphere and stuff, it was just a bit like it was too far outside of my comfort zone or not so much comfort zone, but just my personality. And then a place that I worked in London, it was very good. But again, I've just, I was just treated really badly. People were just treated horribly and it was just not nice. But I still loved what I did. I still loved yeah, working with yeah. in in a restaurant. I still loved the the game of the restaurant. I still loved the game of the personal training aspect of things, the clients that I worked with. So it's kind of hard, right? Like I genuinely like and, and you know it sounds really cheesy and whatnot, but I love doing this video thing and this taking pictures thing and creating stuff and like working as part of this team that I'm currently in. Like I love that shit. <laughs> so, but then but then on that flip side, like I talk about being sad about you know not necessarily involving myself as much with Olivia's life as I, I maybe could. But I but I still really love the time with them, you know? And it almost yeah, feels yeah. a little bit better that I do have a pursuit that's outside of, of that relationship, I guess. You know, because when I get to have bath time with her and I get to give her a bottle and I get to go for a walk with her, it's fantastic and I really love it. And I love it more than I love work. But I don't know, I don't, yeah. <laughs> It's a, it's a hard, it's a hard one because like outside looking in, you work a hell of a lot, and it's it's. I just hope it doesn't come to a head. I hope it doesn't come to some kind of burnout or some kind of yeah. Yeah, be weary. Yeah, there is there is a there's a sacrifice, you know, to whatever success is or whatever however success is defined for an individual. 
But the the my heart with work now, if, as, although I love the act of it, is also the the desire to provide and this overwhelming sense of providing because like i feel i feel capable of emotional support and handling but i feel more capable of using my two hands and going out and, and earning money yeah do you yeah, know what yeah. i mean like i don't yeah. know how, i don't know if, if you feel like that or like other men feel like that or dads feel like that but i i i can i can hug and i kiss i can hug and i can kiss and i can rub backs and and listen and be caring and i can do those things and i think i'm i'm okay at them i'm not amazing at them but I'm much more capable of going to work and putting food on the table and clothes on people's backs and a car on the driveway and a mortgage paid. I feel like that's, I feel more capable of doing that. Yeah. yeah. No, it's, it's probably similar to me. I mean, I'm, I feel like I'm in an interesting place in my life from my mind. I don't know what it is, but I, I could go out there and earn more. I could go out there and probably get a new job and earn 20, 30, 40% more money. And work more, obviously, so that'll probably need me to work maybe five, six days a week, 12, 15 hours a day. Right now I'm doing seven, eight hours a day and four days a week. So I'm definitely just now in my life choosing a flexible approach and a more life over work. And I think I'm okay with that. Like, I've got no issues with it. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and you know, it's kind of on the flip side, it's like, you know, do I worry about the aspect of of missing out on elements of Olivia's life, or really getting, or sort of living for the weekend, if you will, that I get now? But would I regret not pursu- pursuing some of the opportunities that come across like, come a- come a- uh, across me at times? I guess there's like that too. Yeah, there's a so, fine balance. Oh God, it's a never ending balance, Neil. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes I lose at it very badly, and sometimes I win at it very well. Yeah, um, but. Yeah. I guess it's just an evolving process and I'm very lucky to have a, an incredibly understanding wife. And, you know, it, it's kind of occurred to me when you're talking about that, that if Olivia ever turned around to me and said, hey, dad, you work too much. I guess that would change my attitude, maybe. Yeah. I, 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 and you might see that when they when they grow up. Certainly, the boys are now three and a half. They're definitely aware. When I go into the office... They don't see me in the morning because I'm, I'm, I leave generally before they wake up and I see them just before they go to bed. And they're definitely aware of that. Um, when I work from home, they're buzzing because I take them to nursery and I pick them up from nursery. And like, that's their day their day made. So yeah, I think you're in a good, not, not a good position now, but a different position than I am currently because it's very noticeable for the kids. If yeah. Around. Yeah. I think that's, if we have this conversation in three years time, I think I'll probably have a different chat. <laughs> But I think yeah. there's something about me that recognises that a little bit, and I'm willing to go probably pretty hard right now, with the potential of of not necessarily having as much work on in the future. But I don't know. But I, I've, I've always been a bit of a workaholic, I guess. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. So anyway, that's my kind of my my dad, ooh, dad questions out of the way. And um, this this one touched on it a little bit, um, and it's about religion. Oh, so it is. It's quite a quite a straightforward question, in terms of what are your thoughts on religion, and when it comes into. And I know Laura's not really religious, but uh, bringing kids into religion at a young age. What's your thoughts? So first, what's your thoughts overall about religion, and then the whole kids aspect. Thoughts on religion. I'll start with a positive potential one. I feel quite sad that I don't have like a community thing that I go to every week. You know, like the Sunday the Sunday service in a church seems such so appealing because you go along, you chat with your friends or you chat with people that are in the community, you get to know them and it's it's kind of like a a place that everyone sort of congregates and goes to. Like my street if we if my street was entirely religious and we all went to the same church. Although sure I might not like everyone. But at least I'd be able to put a face to a name, yeah, yeah, or a name to a face. You know, I, I, there there might be a level of empathy and understanding that I might get. You know, or we might have difficult conversations rather than having a letter on the front of my car windscreen that says "Do not park here ever again" <laughs> in in capital letters. 
But do you know what I mean? It, it's kind of like a place where there's an opportunity to have a conversation. Absolutely, yeah. And that's and you know people need an excuse to go and do that, which is religion. <laughs> <laughs> Not, yeah. they, they, we don't we don't talk to each other unless there's actually something involved that we have to go and do for some reason, and you know praying to God and what, whichever God it be it seems to force us to do that because it, <laughs> it, if we don't go and do it, then we get spited or whatever it's called from God and we're sinners. So we must go and do that first, and but the byproduct of it is we all talk to each other, <laughs> a nice a nice wee round table chat. Yeah, yeah. So I guess that's a positive thing I think about religion sometimes but then there's kind of like this I suppose it's not so much negative it's more neutral or just it's kind of it it's kind of nonsense i think you know there's it, the god created the well in the christianity overall god created the world then you know a man came first and then the woman was made and whatever else and then she ate the apple and she was the bad one and then we had all these problems now you know, and and with that, there's this I like it's kind of a patriarchal thing. You know, where Catholics, for example, women can't become priests; it's only men. You know, the Pope is never going to be a woman. The the fact that some religions have to, you know, women have to cover up to to a huge extent. In fact, some have to cover up to the point where you can only literally see their eyes. Yeah, or can't even leave the house without a male companion. All like all these kind of things, I just don't. I don't necess- I don't agree with. I don't. I don't feel easy about them. And science, science is just too good nowadays. You know, Jesus, <laughs> Jesus to me. I don't know if any of these are controversial things. I don't think these are offensive. At what I'm saying, I, I hope. I, I hope I have friends who are who are religious, and by no means am I suggesting that it makes them any lesser a friend or a lesser a person. And in fact, it probably enhances them a little bit. Like I said before, with the whole community aspect and. And what not. It's just not something I believe in and I'm I'm interested in believing in. You know, like Jesus, I see Jesus as someone who m- might have done things that people didn't really understand at the time because science didn't really exist. And his story was compelling and he was a compelling invi- individual and he was trying to teach people to be nicer to each other. And fair enough, I guess. Yeah. No, I think that's a, a pretty sole answer. Um, and I'm I'm not religious, but I have been to been to church a couple of times in this area. Rebecca goes most Sundays, and a byproduct of that is Isla and the boys will probably end up going to Sunday school. And again, what Gordon mentioned in terms of that community aspect, when we had the twins, life was full on. We'd get like food parcels sent to our door. I've That's made amazing. Really good, yeah, I know. I've, I've made some really really close friends actually um, that I go out running with, that I climb on rows with. They're all from the church, and not once have they questioned my my religious thinking, or not once have they tried to convert me, or or anything like that. I mean, I don't think religion's ever been brought up when we go into the hills together or run run a trail run together, which I think is really cool. And um, and I I like Sunday school as I mentioned, and that's kind of teaching her life lessons which aren't taught in school. So things like love your neighbor, things like respect everybody, respect your parents. And that kind of thing, and love your See, body, love who the, you are. Yeah, there's there's part of me doesn't agree with that necessarily, because it kind of the you know religion requires you to follow a set of rules, like in this kind of virtue world where you're punished if you don't follow the rules, and you're rewarded if you do follow the rules. So it's heaven and hell, right? If if you don't follow the rules, you go to hell. Yep. If you do follow the rules, you get you go to heaven. So there's kind of part of it is like respect your parents. You're like, well, why? What? Just because they're your parents? Mm. Well, no, they definitely go deeper than that. They don't. They don't just say that as as an example I gave. Um, okay. And she's got friends out of school as well. So she's obviously got her community, her friends in in school. And she's got her friends in Sunday school. And yeah. now she's joined brownies, which is like cubs. Um, from a female point of view, Brownies, she's loving it. And it's getting these different social circles where she's now exposed to different people, different groups. I think that's really important, really kind of socialising them. Um, I mean, some of her friends only go to school and don't have any other kind of social circles. Yeah, that's but fair enough. Isla's got a good amount of yeah. friends. Um, and then the second part of your question was about kids and how I feel about you know children going to church and whatnot. 
And I remember uh, I had a girlfriend, she was very Catholic. And I remember getting into an argument about her, about the fact that I did not want, if we had children, I don't know why we talked about that, but if we had children, <laughs> that I wouldn't have them baptised. And she thought this was absolutely atrocious. I couldn't believe that I was even saying these words. This was a terrible thing to happen. But I felt like my justification was okay. You know, if 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 Olivia turned around to me and said, Dad, I want to go to church now. Will you come with me? When she's like, I don't know, whatever age. I'm like, sure. I'll be there, front and center. With her, let, you know, I don't have to agree with it. To I don't have to agree with religion and, and the aspects of religion and whatnot. Or believe in it, if you will. But I do believe my daughter, and I love my daughter. And if she wanted to go, I'd be there. But I'm not baptizing a baby. Yeah, no, I, I support when, that. Yeah. When when you're 16, when you're 18, when you're when you're like at least 16, if if Olivia turns to me and says, "Dad, will you come to my baptism?" I'll be like, "A hundred percent. I'll be there. No worries. I, can I pay for it? In fact, <laughs> like, how much do yeah. I need to donate to the church? <laughs> yeah, you know, because that's that's the right thing to do. But until they're that age, no, sorry." Yeah, I no, guess. I think I, I support that. I support that. Um, good. That's a... <laughs> I was trying it. I do, like. I, it's a hard topic. It's a hard topic. It is a bit of a hard topic because I don't want to offend anyone, but equally they are my opinions. And to be yeah. fair, they're not like I don't think they're offensive. By the way, if anyone's listening to this and anyone would like to comment, by all means, WhatsApp me, <laughs> Instagram, comment me, like call me out on it, check me on it. I'm okay with that, but I don't think. I can have an opinion on not necessarily supporting religion and supporting some of the ideas behind religion, I guess. Yeah, cool. So th- this t- this kind of next question are kind of quick fire, not, not as deep, but name one thing that you change in your 20s. One thing I would change in my 20s. End, end relationships sooner if they're not going well. Don't hang on to them. Solid advice. Solid advice. When you think of the word successful, who is the first person that comes to your mind and why? <laughs> successful. Just just successful. Yeah. The first person that comes to my mind. It's a bit cheesy, but you. Oh. Neil. Thanks. <laughs> um And I say that just because of the way that you, you asked that question about like work life balance aspect. And the way that you kind of answered it for yourself. Like, how how genuinely, how many dads do you know have have that peace that you have? Yeah. And that's happiness. Like, you're happy, Neil. And that's success. To me, that's like, if there's ever a definition of success, it's like, are you happy? Yes. Right. Well, Fucking doesn't matter how much money you've got, does it? Doesn't matter how many cars you've got. Doesn't matter how big your business is. Doesn't matter how how many kids you've got. It doesn't doesn't matter. Like I'm sure there's some desires that you have and whatnot. I mean, you could argue that's not necessarily peace if you still have desires. But to me, there was kind of like you've got much less desires, and you're much in this kind of middle ground position where you're like, I'm just I'm pretty content. I'm pretty happy. And that's yeah, peace. That's yeah. happiness. Here we go. So there you go. Yeah. There you I've, cra- go. I've cracked happiness for the for the foreseeable. <laughs> well, <laughs> fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah, nice. Thank you. Um, the most useful product or service you've bought in the last year for under a hundred pounds? Service or product that I've bought in the last year it was under a hundred pounds. Oh dear! It could be a subscription to a website or even that's a book. A, or yeah, that's a good one. And useful. What do you like? I yeah, ask. yeah. Useful. Something you use every day or most times a week or under. Well, my coffee machine definitely wasn't one hundred pounds. The beans that go in it were, <laughs> <laughs> but I can't count that. I'm gonna. I'm gonna probably like my first instinct is to say Spotify because yeah. there's there's three things that I use Spotify for. First one is music. It. It's nice. I like listening to it. I like pondering, listening to it. I also will suggest, like, and this comes to mind as well with Spotify and why I think it's the best under hundred pound thing I've purchased. It does, it does loads of stuff actually. First of all, Spotify, yeah, the music thing. But I literally built my online business, sat in prep, listening to Spotify 
listening to Tom, yeah. Mi- Tom Mish beat tape to on repeat. And that kept my brain kind of just, there was no vocals or whatever else, and it just kept me going. Spotify literally helped me, and Tom Mish, if you're listening to this, which you imagine you're not, but <laughs> you helped me build my business. And that has kind of got me to this point now. The second thing is it does more of a future aspect of things. I listen to podcasts on it now, and I get to know people that are, are totally different thinkers, and I'm really getting into that podcast stuff and listening to people and hearing their stories and their successes and their wisdom and all that kind of stuff to access that I would have never had before. I'd have never yeah. known who these people were unless I'd read the book. But now when you can hear their voices, even Spotify has the whole uh, Joe Rogan video thing as well. Like All of that is just so good. And then there's another part of it where, by the way, I shouldn't, I shouldn't say this, but screw it. You can, like, you can share, you can have a family Spotify, right? So yeah. I have a family Spotify. Laura's got it. Jack, my brother-in-law's got it. Uh, David, my father-in-law's got it. Even Laura's grandparents have got it. So, and I just, I just pay for that. Like, and I'm okay yeah. with doing that because they all get all that pleasure from it, and it doesn't cost me that much money. Yeah. But it brings so much joy. Like, I remember the first time Laura's grandmother played Spotify over her speaker, and I can't remember the song that she played. But Laura woke up, I think, at midnight, came through to the living room, was like, "What the hell's going on? There's a party going on in here." <laughs> But they were just, they love it. Like, they absolutely yeah, love it. Yeah. And I remember when I had to change, like, the password or something, and I got messages from every family member going, what's happened to the Spotify? <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, it's 100% Spotify. A solid choice. Solid choice. And it is amazing. Like, podcast is just a different world. I mean, you can read books and stuff, but when you're hearing the author discuss it over an hour or two, it's yeah. just awesome. And then it's also this whole thing, like, it allows us to distribute this conversation. And it's stored there, and it's ready, you know, whenever... Whatever anyone wants to listen to it. Yeah, cool. So, how has a failure or apparent failure set you up later for success? A failure or an apparent failure? I don't know. What kind of thing? Parent failure? A failure or an apparent failure? Hmm. Get something in one of your businesses you've ran, which didn't go so well, but it ended up being. Oh yeah, yeah, we had that. I guess, uh, I guess, yeah, the the whole like club photography thing that I decided to do from our previous uh, podcast stuff. Yeah, yeah, right. Like that was a terrible idea. I really actually think about it. You know, <laughs> staying out till two, three in the morning, four in the morning, then going to work at six, seven o'clock the next, or the same morning. You know, doing that every weekend for a few weeks. That was bonkers. Yeah. But then it kind of sowed a seed, really, didn't it? I guess. It sowed a seed in my mind. And you took photos of... I, I remember when, when you came, you used to come back home to Bograxi. You used to have the massive camera with you and stuff. It kind of... Yeah. Yeah, it definitely sowed the seed in your creativity and your, your photo-taking ability. Yeah, and it, you know, it, it. and look at me now, really, I guess. Yeah. You know, dumb decision to go and take pictures in a, uh, in a club, <laughs> certainly at the time. <laughs> But here we are, like, live the dream. If you could have a gigantic billboard with anything on it, what would you say or put? Gigantic billboard. Middle of New York or oh, on a wow. massive highway. Do I have to help anyone with this or could it just be a comedy thing? <laughs> <laughs> what well, if I had a billboard, what would it potentially say on it? I, I guess I quite like, you know, the the mantra or the idea of sing like no, nobody's listening and dance like nobody's looking. Nice. Um, I think you're going to choose a Muhammad Ali one. but n- No, I, I kind of think about that, but I think Muhammad Ali is a bit of a dick. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> like, you know, he's just like a Conor McGregor, right? Is Conor McGregor a bit of a dick? Yeah, because he just kind of like... <laughs> He's just an exaggerated personality. I guess Muhammad Ali was a good boxer, but he wasn't a great boxer. There's better boxers out there, like Tyson Fury's better than he is, but he's also a bit of a dick, or has been a bit of a dick. But then he's come out and owned it. Muhammad Ali, I don't think, ever did come out and own the fact that, you know... He said some pretty bad things. Yeah. Anyway, that's a different story for it, but... Yeah, it's kind of a cliche thing, like, you know, sing like nobody's listening and dance like nobody's looking. But... Isn't that kind of how you should live life a little bit? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, no, I, I, I like that. 
that's, that's a good one off your off the top of your head. Yeah, no, I I love that kind of that 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 kind of mantra just because it's just a good way to live. You know, like there's two there's two, two people are too focused on themselves. Like, and it's amazing when you get up and you do something. How many people are like, oh, that was really cool. Let's do it. Let's can I do it with you? You know, or when you start dancing, like you just get up and start dancing. Who gives a shit? Yeah, yeah. Um, what unusual habit or absurd thing do you do or have? A weird, a weird habit or an absurd thing I do? <laughs> I don't know. Am I a bit weird? I think I'm a bit weird, but I'm very good if anyone's watching on YouTube. I'm very good at spinning my phone on my finger. <laughs> <laughs> I do that all the time. Yeah, which is, I'm, I've which no is idea how you do that. It's my. It's like a weird, weird tick that I have, I guess. Um, but is that weird? No, yeah, that, that, that takes the box, I think. All right, fine. I can spit. I spin my phone on my finger very successfully without ever dropping it. So timing's pretty good because this is this is the last question. And it, oh, it might might take you a wee while to think about the answer. But in the last five years, what new belief, behaviour, or habit has most improved your life? Last five years, a habit that's improved my life. Or a belief, or something you've maybe or read a, in a book that you've taken, or or a belief. Um, ooh. God, these are hard questions. Habit or belief that's changed my life? I don't know, actually. Like I'd, I'd, I'd say exercise, but then that's not in the last five years. It's last like twenty years. You know. <laughs> I don't know, Neil, if I'm honest. Like, maybe... What about some some advice you've heard from a podcast or Ali or a book you've read? Is there anything you can kind of think off the top of your head? I think the last five years, like a habit or a thing that I changed, certainly in the last five years, was saving money. And saving money in a way which was more strategic than just saying, I'll put 50 quid in my bank account. That's 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 hundred percent the thing that's in the last nice. five years. Because for a long part of my life I don't have a pension. Not a thing. I didn't really save money. My idea of saving money was just my bank balance and my current account going up. <laughs> yeah. But there was no strategy. There was no like, hey, let's put two hundred pounds a month into this bank account or let's put a uh, hundred pounds into this bank account or whatever else. Like I could probably could have saved myself a lot of tax if I just put it into my pension rather than, you know, just paying corporation tax. So, like, in the last five years, from the age of 29 to 34, the whole savings thing, and it's now, like, it's now paying off. This is the thing. You know, I, I, I can afford to extend my house. I could afford yeah. to buy my buy my house with a 15% deposit rather than a 10% deposit. Like, all of these things, like, that, and it's not from me, like, being silly, silly, like, frugal and being ty- a tight, typical Scotsman. You know, it was just putting something away, something that was unnoticeable or uh, certainly affordable, and then getting Laura to do that too, but then also putting it like somewhere, putting it into a Stocks and Shares ISA and leaving it there and just letting it mount up and mount up and mount up. And it's done enough to help me do this extension. Like, Yeah, no, that's awesome. That's a, that's a good one to end on. Yeah, and yeah. So yeah, <laughs> if you, no one has started saving anything, just save something. And I think there's a... He's a, a chap called Aiden who, um, he's a personal trainer and he, I started, I don't like calling it this cause it's a bit, it's a bit wank, but basically it's like mentoring, right? So when the pandemic sort of started kicked in, the second lockdown sort of kicked in, he became a personal trainer and he had no clients, he had nothing. And every week or every couple of weeks, we'll have a, a, a mentoring call where we catch up and we go through his goals, we go through his targets, and then we catch up and go through all this stuff. Anyway, he's done really well out of it. Made, you know, I don't know, making 50 grand a year or something now and he's doing his personal training thing. But one of the things I said to him, I was like, dude, have you got a pension? This kid's like 22 years old. <laughs> he's like, no. He's like, get a bloody pension. Like, sort it out. It's like, how do I do it? I was like, fucking Google it for crying out loud. <laughs> but yeah. he's, now, he's got a pension set up. He's now contributing and saving towards it. 
He uh, he now makes sure that he's paid off all these debts and all that kind of stuff. So he's got no like car payments or you know stuff to pay off. He now pay- makes sure that that's all handled, and he's saving towards a house. He's being strategic and putting it away as well. So, and I I, I know, and that's not. I'm not telling him where to put his money. I'm not telling him how much to save. I'm telling him to go out and find out. But I hope and pray, and I'm sure I'm going to be right. I'm almost sure. Sorry, I'm going to be right that he'll he'll. He'll benefit from that, and he'll be able to yeah, buy a house no, when sure. he's like for sure. mid to late twenties, and all these mates will still be going to Ibiza and pissing all their money away. I guess with no pension, <laughs> with no yeah, with no pension. So yeah, that's the one. Save save something. That's all, and save it in a strategic way. Maximize your stocks and shares, ISA. Put it somewhere. Do something with it. Um, yeah, nice one. No, that was a good. Uh, I enjoyed that episode. Oh, I did you? Uh, yeah, did you enjoy it? Yeah, it did. It's like a mix of like a bit of heartfelt stuff, a little bit of reflection, bit of gratitude. You know, that was good. I like it. Good. The, the, qu- the quick fire questions came from Tim Ferriss. Oh, there we go. All right. I'll have to, I'll have to up my game for your one. But we should maybe save your one for a little while. So we, we won't do this one yet. So if, if anyone's listening to the podcast, you know, you might have to wait a few episodes before we do Neil's, <laughs> <laughs> Neil's one. <laughs> Maybe do it face to face. We did, we did though, ladies and gentlemen. We did, we did it. We made over a thousand downloads on our podcast. We did. Where's which, the party poppers and the streamers? I know, which is which is brilliant. Actually, I was really pleased with that. Getting to that thousand, we've got over twenty episodes. Like, I don't know. Yeah, that's it's a, it's a good milestone. It is good, and I'm pleased. Since it, since I introduced it, Neil, I think it's your your. I was, I was gonna, to, I was gonna just use some time up. What have you got planned for the weekend? Oh, use some time. <laughs> Get those listeners in. Plans for the weekend. We've got to map out our electrical sockets uh-huh. and light switches. You know, exciting. Why can't Why can't they just like do it for us? You know. <laughs> but apparently, you can't just leave people to their own devices because they'll put they they'll put it where they think it should go. And I've got to take responsibility for my own things. Apparently. Nice. And then. Monday bank holiday, Fulham are playing, so they should have, uh, they might win the championship on Monday. Wow. And then, oh, we've got tomorrow night, no baby, we're off out for dinner with a couple of friends, which is very nice, so I might have a few beverages, but not too many that I'm going to wake up hang- hungover, because that is the most horrific thing in entire life, is to have to look after a baby hungover. And that's it. Then I'm back to work on Tuesday, start the daily vlogs. Can I wait? Oh, wow. how about you? Um, we're actually going away tomorrow camping, so a great holiday for the for the three kids and the wife. Um, okay, off on Monday, so yeah, it should be good. The kids are. I mean, I, I told them at the start of the week we're going camping. Every single day, they're like, "We're going today. We're going today. We're going today." <laughs> very excited. So nice, yeah. And it's meant to be sunshine, which is always good when you're living in a tent. <laughs> always good when you're living in a tent. <laughs> Neil, I don't know. I don't know if there's any way you'll ever get me in a tent, but you know, I'm sure on a sunny day that's the only way you might get me. <laughs> but then I'll only stay in the tent to have some food, and then I'm off to a hotel. <laughs> anyway, um, precious old Gordon. Is what? Sorry, I said you're a precious. Oh, nah. I'm just. I've earned enough money to not have to spend time in a tent, Neil. <laughs> <laughs> Experiences, Gordon. Kids love it way more than a hotel. Jacuzzis are a great experience, Neil, in your hotel room. Hey, you got to be 16 to be in a jacuzzi, Gordon. Do you? Oh, well. <laughs> Kids don't come then. <laughs> anyway, on that note, good episode. Thanks for listening, everybody. Um, check us out on Instagram. There's not been many reels posted. I'll need, to, I'll need to up my game a little bit. Yeah, hold on a minute. I think I should probably call you out on that. Neil's, Neil's <laughs> not been pulling his weight. Let's be honest. I know, I know. Um, I need to pull my finger out again. And yeah. Thanks for listening. Check us out on Spotify. Give us a, a thumbs up or a rating. Check us out on I, I, iTunes, podcast, Apple Podcasts. YouTube, all Instagram, stuff. all that kind of jazz. And then the last one Neil has to do is to change the Greenhorn Podcast.live to Developing Dads Podcast.live. Yeah, I need to see if that's that's a, a legit domain. Well, we've got Developing Dads on Instagram. I know, I was surprised. That's ours. Anyway, yes, thanks very much, guys. Guys and girls. Cheers. Peace. Bye-bye.